Welcome to the Exceptionally Irresistible Show, featuring conversations with people who have demonstrated exceptional success in their lives and who have some irresistible qualities worth learning from. Come learn how others have created an exceptionally irresistible life. You too can live an extraordinary life, both personally and professionally. So sit back, relax, grab your favorite beverage, and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Exceptionally Irresistible Show. A little reminder, ladies and gentlemen, you are already exceptional, right? We speak about that all the time. We bring guests to highlight their stories, but for what purpose? It's for you guys. You guys live an exceptional life already. It's already there. The only time is sometimes we need a little reminder. We need a little, you know, inspiration to ignite that fire. And who better to invite exceptionally irresistible guests who show and demonstrate that in their own lives? Because perhaps maybe you will find inspiration because you're going to hear their story and you're going to resonate. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, yeah. And that's what this is all about. So I was privileged to just meet this incredible individual who has such an incredible story. Her name is Carol Williams. And as you're going to hear when we introduce her and when we bring her on stage, this is an individual who has so much grit, went through so much in her life, and has really identified a message, a mission, and she went for it. She's going for it. And she's accomplishing in it. And you know what's the highlight? What I love best about her story is that she transforms lives. People who are going through similar to what she went through she's now able to draw from her previous experiences and help other people. I like to call she is the hero of her story to other people to make them heroes in their story. Because go figure, maybe those individuals will get transformed by her and will be able to transform others. And that's what makes her so exceptionally irresistible. And without further ado, I want to introduce Carol Williams. Hey, Carol, how's it going? You're me. It's going great. How's it going with you? Going amazing. I'm super excited about this. Um, your story is just so remarkable. It's so incredible. And, you know, before we dive a little bit deeper, um, the way we love to start off is if you were standing on a rooftop somewhere, you're on the top mm. of a mountain, you're on top of something, and you have a megaphone and you're able to scream out a message, people mm -hmm. are to your message. What's that message? The message is, is you have a light inside of you that is yours uniquely. Mm. And it is your honor, privilege, and responsibility mm. to illuminate that, spread that message for the light and love and good of the world. Wow. I'm getting goosebumps as you said that. It is so remarkable. And that's that's literally what this show is all about. That exception. I know. Is show. <laughs> so you really just like, it's almost like we, we we met on some spiritual level and we're like, hey, you, we, we gotta talk, you know? So um, so this is really incredible. And and I love your message so much because we around here talk a lot about, you know, the fingerprint, to leave that fingerprint on the world, you're to leave your mark. Because there's only one. There only there will only be one. There never has been anybody with your fingerprint and there never will be. So yeah. leave that mark and, and that light. I love how you say the light that really helps them shine out. Do you mind expanding a little bit more on the light? What, what, that, what does that mean to you? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the light, uh, I'm going to start with what it's not. Mm. What it's not is the idea as I'm not enough. Mm. What it's not is the idea that, oh my gosh, I'll just use coaches because I'm a coach. Like there are so many coaches and incidentally there are, there are so many coaches. Like how do I differentiate myself? How am I different than such and somebody, whatever. That just creates this, um, this feeling of not enoughness. I've got to run to keep up. Ooh, I better do this or I better do that. And it's all this external focus. 
Mm. And it takes us away from standing on our own two feet, which is where, um, which is where everything lives, you know? So we stand on our own two feet and very spiritual. So I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. I believe that what we can do is we can take a deep breath, close our eyes and picture uh, from the crown of our head to infinity up so that there there is a divine uh, light and a a cord, right? And then down below, all the way through our bodies, through the balls of our feet and down to the center of the earth to where the core of the earth is that there's there's the our groundedness and Mm -hmm. if you can picture light moving from coursing throughout your body it's going to light up different centers of of your soul and your heart and all your chakras and all that stuff and there's a responsibility that we have Mm -hmm. and the responsibility is to say i am unique in this world and sure there's a lot of other coaches there's a lot of other podcast coaches you know hosts there's a lot of people saying this message that are saying that you and i are saying but we are the ones that are seeing it uniquely as you say to on the fingerprint so it helps it helps with imposter syndrome the one more thing and that is um i have a mentor and she said your normal is somebody else's aha Mm. so we don't feel like we're anything special and in fact we aren't but yet we are sure we are very special because we are us yeah i love that i love that and it's really tying in because um as you were talking i was right away thinking about one of my most dreaded words that I've ever heard, you know, imposter syndrome. It, it's it's a pet peeve to me. I hate it. I don't like it. Sorry, guys, whoever disagrees, sorry, but that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have a background in psychology and I remember when I very first, like the very first mm-hmm. time I learned about it and I was just like, I wrote a whole paper about it for school and I was just like, I think that imposter syndrome is just somebody with a very low confidence. And as you said, somebody who's mm-hmm. just, not aligned with their spiritual light in a sense. Mm. Um, I love that you say that because, and here's what's resonating to me out of what you share is that it's it's just, it, it's relieving that responsibility that I have that is really mm-hmm. unique to me, not taking ownership over my own life mm. and my destiny and, and why I was put here on the world, you know, like what mm. purpose. And as we all know, those who are in the coaching space, in the consulting space, in mentoring space, advising space, with no purpose, you got no business. You got no, like, what are you doing? You know, what's going on? And, you know, people will never be successful if they don't, if they don't operate out of their purpose, you know? So I'm just really hyper curious about how did you get to this message? What, what drew you to, you know, yeah. finding that light, finding that purpose? operating out of that purpose. What does that look like? <laughs> a lot of personal help. <laughs> and so, you know that, but that's true. Um, so I have this purpose because it's been a continuous, I've been on a continuous improvement path for some time. I believe I kind of came into this world super happy. You know, there are all the pictures of me when I was a little kid were happy and you know, kind of prancing around and dancing around. And then, I don't know, I got to be a teenager and got kind of tough and, you know, learned that. And then I wound, and I, but I learned that love was super important. Mm. And I was also a huge empath, right? So I, I grew up, I wound up marrying a guy um, that was not particularly healthy for me, but I did love him. And still, I mean, you know, like, I don't know if you ever don't love anybody anymore, but, but you know, like I still kind of do, you know, cause he's the father of my children. Right. So, sure. and I don't believe in anybody's like innately bad, but I think that, um, you know, there are some people that are, um, put in our lives to teach us hard lessons. And mm. that's the lesson I learned was that, um, there are many takers in the world and many people who, um, like kind of feed off of you. So eventually um, I left the marriage and it wasn't actually for me. It was for my oldest son because I was uh, told to do so by my psychologist and I left and I spent the next, you know, 
five, six, seven years really working on me as, as well as keeping everything afloat and all that. It was really hard. And, and so, um, so if you're, I'll say, if you're in a bad marriage or if you're in a bad relationship, you know, just know that you're worthy of kindness and love and respect. And so if you're not getting that, um, do the thing that's hard to do and make sure you are clear about that and resolve it in whatever way works for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's how I came to it because the, the, the more I unpeeled what was behind me wanting to get organized. I started out as an organizer when I started mm-hmm. my business in 09. The more I unpeeled that oh, productivity, oh, time management, and you know, all those things, what is that for? Right. It's to organize our lives so that we're able to function in the world. But so what? Mm. And I kept trying different things and I was kind of uninspired with it. Like going after like, Oh, okay. Well, I'll go after corporations because, you know, there's money there. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't finding any personal happiness and satisfaction with it. So I wound up saying, you know, what I love is I love, I love entrepreneurs because they're passionate and a little bit crazy. Wait, just like me. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and so, you know, then I got good at that. Mm. I'm skipping over a lot of the story here, but mm. I got really good at that. And now I'll say I'm an expert at that. And um, and now I can really say I'm kind of at my next, I feel like pinnacle, because I shared with you in the green room that I was just going through a lot of success and I got a bit of, got a bit of burnout. And so I need right. to really sharpen my pencil and take some really quiet time. I've never done that in my mm. whole life, you know, mm. um, since I was 15, I worked really hard. And so I did, and I said, hang on, what, what's up with me? Like, what am I doing? Because after 15 years in business, like you're not messing around anymore. You're right. actually either going to do it or you're not, or you can figure yourself out You get older, you know? And I said, oh, I'm doing this because when I switched over my company name, uh, let's see, it's 24 now. So January 1st, 2023 to Beacon of Light Center. And that had been in the works for a few years. It's like, I'm here to light the light of the world. The center's mission is to light the light of the world in all different ways. And uh, that's why it's so important that you know what your purpose is because there's Mm -hmm. no way you can realistically light the light of the world um, effectively unless you know what your true strengths and purpose and mission is. And when you, on the opposite side, when you do know that, then Mm -hmm. everything is easy. Right. And why wouldn't you want things to be easy? Why do we feel like we have to work so hard and push and right. slog and make it difficult? So that's mm-hmm. why. No, and I love I love what you're sharing here. And it's something that I've spoken to to some of my clients. Um, what we're doing as well is is all about trying to find that easier path. Um, I love what you're sharing is because I, I like to see it as yeah, business is difficult, you know, like, like I I come from an entrepreneur background. So I've seen entrepreneurs all over, you know, everywhere, all, all, all who surround me are entrepreneurs. Um, But I haven't seen a single one not struggle. And, but, (laughs) you know, that's the business. And, you know, personally, I went through three or four businesses of my own and I struggled equally through each one of them. Yeah. Um, But something you just said, Carol, really hits the nail on the head because, and I find that extremely inspirational because no, like the, 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 we're all on a journey. We all go through life. We all go through, you know, experiences. We all go through, you know, different levels of, of relationships, whatever the case is. Um, But it's really sharpening that, that pencil, like you said, it's really finding like, like, refining our light so mm. the way I look at it is as we grow in experience or as we grow in our business uh, whether mm. it's our first, second third whatever doesn't matter uh, but we eventually get to that laser focus like mm-hmm. that light is more and more you know mm-hmm. laser focused in and yeah. um, and it's that that's eventually you know you can run business seamlessly you can run business with a lot less stress yeah. Um, you know, people like people like you really, really demonstrate that uh, because, you know, you go through a, an experience and then you shift and then you 
you go through another experience and then you shift and then you know we like to call it around here upgrading not to not, <laughs> yeah. not, you know it's really just the next level of business or life or however you see it um i find that extremely extremely inspirational and i'm sure many people who are listening here are just getting those aha moments uh from saying like it's okay to have struggled but what's that next change what's that next step that i could take you know yeah. i need to speak to somebody like carol i need to speak to somebody like you i need to speak to somebody yeah. like whoever they're meeting you know uh to get to that next level to get to that next shift um, that's right. So that, that's really, really important. And, you know, I'm so glad you shared that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, there must be a driving why in there somewhere. I don't know. I'm, I'm sensing yeah. that, you know, something, <laughs> something deeper in you is driving you. What, like, why is this yeah. so important that, you know, you want to share yeah. that with people? Well, it's really important because, um, like, so probably about 80% of the people I work with are, are women, mm -hmm. usually women in sort of midlife-ish, 50s, 60s, and they're soloists. But not always. The other 20% or whoever. I had a Muslim guy in his 30s wind up finding yeah. me on LinkedIn once. He was an amazing client. So, so there's always wonderful exceptions to every rule. But at the end of the day, I'm a woman in her 50s that's a soloist, right? So mm -hmm. I am my best client. Mm -hmm. And when I first started my business... I was all over the place, throwing spaghetti at the wall, running around at breakneck speed, um, just as I did, incidentally, in my in my marriage, mm -hmm. running around at breakneck speed, trying to make sure I keep all the holes covered in the dike. And you know, when you're in your 20s and 30s, and even into your 40s, you can do that. But then you know what happens? You get tired. Mm -hmm. And sooner or later, you get those taps on the shoulder from your body that mm -hmm. say, guess what? You can't walk, you, you know, anymore because you get this weird ache or, mm -hmm. you know, um, people that I've worked with, you know, maybe they have fibromyalgia. I'm not, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, I'm not a health coach and I'm not going to fix your health issues, but the body keeps the score. Mm -hmm. And so how long do we wait? before the body just totally gives in and gives up. Sure. Well, I really hope that somebody listening to this is starting to get those whispers and they say, oh, hang on. It's time to get out of the circle of doom. Mm. And it's time yeah. to start, you know, start doing something different. Remember the question? I kind of got off. No, 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 no. You're, just the, the deeper why. I think, I think you explained okay. it. Okay. Yeah, you know, you're experiencing it, and you, you yeah. know, you're, you're feeling it, and you just don't want others to feel the same way. And I, I think yeah. that's, that's remarkable. And that's what I shared a little bit earlier is that, you know, you're the hero of your story, and now you're trying to yeah. help others. You know, you're gonna yeah. be a hero for them too. But the the main purpose, what I gathered from your story, um, is that you're trying to help other people to be the hero of their story. You know, well, that's exactly it. And so to treat ourselves the way we would treat our best friend. Yeah. Right. And and to be not only just okay, but celebrate that mm. whatever our main thing is right now can be the main thing. Mm. And just allow the other things to kind of take a back seat for now mm. and sure. totally be okay with it and even celebrate it. Mm. I once worked uh with with a man um of great means and he was in his 50s and doing a second career, you know. And he came to me and he said, I want I want some time management. And I said, okay. And I interviewed him and, you know, I thought, well, we can, we can unravel this pretty easily. And what I found was there were some deep beliefs in there that all he had to do was delegate everything out and, and parse it all out into some perfect little time management, you know, castle. And it would all just kind of work and it worked for him and he could just sort of sit back with his feet up. Well, mm -hmm. it didn't work like that. And we, he went through, through some hard lessons wow. learning that the word no was a critical piece of his vocabulary. And it's not no forever. One mm -hmm. of his aha moments was it's not no forever. You know, it's no for now. Mm -hmm. And we can put this other stuff in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And we can then keep it there for a while and go back periodically. So, okay, hang on. Do I want to do that? No, 
no, or maybe it comes out of the parking lot or maybe it stays or maybe it moves forward, mm -hmm. but that we don't have to focus on everything all at once. And in fact, if we do, we get nothing done, we're exhausted. Sure. You know, I, I have a very curious question. This is just coming up as I'm listening to you speak because I just experienced it and I'm inching towards my 40 actually. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not 40 yet, but I'm getting there. Um, but this this realization happened to me very recent. And I said, yeah. um, you know, I don't want to be that 50 year old who's still working hard, who's still, you know, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. And why don't yeah. I start from now? Why don't I start thinking about this now as yeah. you know, I, I still have a couple of years to 40 and, you know, why not, you know, plan it out from now so that yeah. my 40s, my 50s and future, hopefully, um, will be a lot less stressful and so much more seamless uh, because I know that I'm only going to get more tired. I'm only going to get, you know, whatever it is. Um, why not start from now? So I know that you were talking a lot about individuals who are in their third, you know, fifties and stuff. Uh, but does this at all, you know, does this at all um, resonate with somebody who's yeah. you know, around my age, let's say, yeah. is it not smart to start from now? I mean, I'm looking yeah. in the mirror here. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, you are the exception. Let's let's just start there. And, and this man I was describing in his thirties, you know, he was. I think you shared with me that you're doing your graduate degree, your doc, your doctorate. Yeah. And he, this man I'm describing, he was a PhD. Oh wow. Leader in his field, you know, yeah. and but yet sort of was doing too many things running around trying to please everybody else right, right. so the answer is absolutely mm. please take whatever i offer in order <laughs> to work for you what i'm saying is that the vast majority of us sort of the 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 regular slobs as it were mm. usually try to uh, work really hard including me by the way mm -hmm. i'm my own worst enemy or i used to be and when we when we do something for a while because we grow up in a certain way sort of for me it was frenetic action mm. just keep working harder keep doing the thing more and more it works wow. for a while mm -hmm. and then it doesn't right. so if you're reaching either your aha or your breaking point hopefully you're not broken but your aha that will allow you to turn mm. the dial and change the behavior earlier on Amen, mister. I think that's awesome. I love it. Most of the time, behavior change. Knowledge is not behavior change. Right. Right. We can read the book. We can know what to do. Our behavior is going to not change until and unless we, you know, experience a major problem usually mm. and then say enough is enough. I can't handle this anymore. Sure. So that means we look outside ourselves to say, okay, I've tried to fix this problem. I can't fix it myself. Are there books? Are there teachers? Are there mentors? You know, is there a program? Is there something mm. that'll give me, uh, you know, the tools and the system, the yeah. accountability and, and the leader so mm. that I have those three, three stool pieces on my three legged stool so yeah. that then I can I can uh, go ahead and succeed in ways I cannot do on my own. Love it, love it, love it, love, love, love it. And I'm I'm just so inspired myself right now from all that you shared and everything. And there's very evidently everybody who's watching this could absolutely see the passion and the fire that is you know coming out of everything you're sharing. It's pure gold. Let me just say, Carol. Um, Thank you. I'm just curious <laughs> what's you know, what do you, where do you draw your inspiration from? Where are you getting all this from? It's, it's sure. remarkable. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll say that one, one of my big turnarounds was in 2015 when I decided to focus only on coaching mm -hmm. uh, versus all these other things that I was trying to do and keep the boat afloat. And it was still, the ship was still sinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and her name is Melinda Cohen. Mm -hmm. She founded um, a company called the Coaches Console, and I, in full transparency, am also a senior coach on her team on a contract basis. Mm -hmm. And she and her team teach people how to build, launch, and scale their businesses. That is not my full-time job. That's just something I do on the side. But she is my, absolutely, she's one of my 
biggest mentors. In fact, I was in her first book called The Confident Coach. And um, I, I know I'm going to be in her second book as well, which hasn't come out yet. Um, so she's a big one. But um, down through the years, gosh, so many, so many people, um, different productivity people, but those sort of sort of come and go. Um, Kyle Cease on like spirituality. I love Kyle Cease and how it's sort of crazy. He, he went a little bit off the deep end for me, but um, there's that. Let's see. Another one uh, of late is a woman named Amanda Crowell. Mm. She has an amazing book. She's also a, a psychiatrist or psychologist my apologies amanda i don't know what you are exactly but you're something and it's a, a phd at the end and she has a book called great work which mm. i thought oh my gosh i love this because i was helping people with their purpose and she has put it into words that wow. i absolutely love and her book is called great work do what matters most without sacrificing everything else um, mm -hmm. A couple more before I go. Let's see. I just finished a program with Rich Litvin, um, which is called Project Kairos. It's the right time. I just completed that at the end of last month. As we record this, it's in the middle of May, so that was recent. Um, he is one of the huge leaders in the space um, because I wanted a different perspective. You know, mm -hmm. um, she, he wrote a book called The Prosperous Coach probably 15 years ago, and he's coming out with a new book now. Um, let's see, there's another one. Michael Bungie Stainer is another guy who I really uh, like. And I actually asked him and his team, could I use one of the exercises from his, um, his system in, in, in my lead magnet, my, my free book that I have. And he granted me permission as long as I, I quoted him, which I did. So mm -hmm. I, I take kind of bits and pieces yeah, I love from it. sort of everybody. And then of course, but the most important part is I, I have my own. Sure. You know, and I take it and I make it mine. Yeah. What do they say? There's no new information. It's just how you're delivering, especially when the world of AI. Sure. Everything is going to be pirated no mm -hmm. matter what you do. Yeah. So you you are the only you you can be. And that's and nobody, mm -hmm. even people who make even if I found a Coach Carol robot on sale <laughs> for twenty nine ninety five, you know like Brendan Burchard did, you know, um, <laughs> they're still not going to be me. No, you're right. They cannot answer the way I can answer. I am my own. I am my own person and I am much bigger than any kind of AI. Love it. I'm so, <laughs> glad. I'm so glad we did this, Carol. I really, you know, this is incredible. And I'm sure so many people who are watching, who are listening right now are taking away how important it is to really shine from within, you know, find that exceptional, exception exceptional that they are you know yeah, and yeah. operate out of that exceptional irresistible and i'm so glad to our uh, friend noemi who introduced us to each other yeah uh, did a yeah. phenomenal job with that so that does bring us towards the conclusion of our show um okay. carol you are amazing you know the audience has learned i'm sure so much and from your wisdom from the goal that you just shared with us from your light you know we really felt that here and we really really appreciate you um that is, that is it for today's episode of the Exceptionally Irresistible Show. We will see you all again next time. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye. That's it for this week's episode of the Exceptionally Irresistible Show. What has inspired you to take action in your life? Take action now. Take the first step. Share it with a friend or write it in a journal. Subscribe and share this episode. And remember... You too are exceptionally irresistible.